Well, hello and welcome to all of our gold audience here today. I'm Fiona Langsharp, IBCLC Director of Communications and MC here at Gold Learning. Well, today I'm sitting down with our guest, Catherine Nelson Piercy is here from us from the UK and we're gonna be talking to her just in a moment. And of course, we're gonna be talking about our Gold Obstetrics Conference today. Uh, very excited that that is coming up and right around the corner here. It is for for our, it'll be starting on November 9th, 2020, and you'll be able to join us live on that day with our opening keynote as well. So don't forget to head over to the website right now at goldobstetrics.com to register for that free event and of course our full conference as well. Well, welcome Kathy, it's great to have you here today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, thank you. And, and Kathy, so let's just go over a couple of things today um, while we just get warmed up here. But you're going to be talking about management of medical disorders on the labor ward. But before we get into that, let's uh, have you introduce yourself to our audience here today. So perhaps tell them, uh, I know I kind of gave it away a little bit, but let them know where you are in the world, uh, what part of the UK you're in and what you what do you do on a day to day right now? Okay, thank, thank you, Fiona. My name is uh, Kathy Nelson Piercy. I'm a consultant obstetric physician and professor of obstetric medicine. So that means I trained as a physician. We in the UK call it a physician. Across the pond, it would be an internist. So I'm not an OBGYN, although many people think I am because of what I do. Um, so uh, I work in a big tertiary referral unit with lots of high risk patients, um, high risk obstetric patients. Patients, but mm -hmm. I look after exclusively look after women with medical problems and uh -huh. I look after the whole range of medical problems, cardiac disease, respiratory disease, neurological disease. Um, I do a lot of pre-pregnancy counseling for women um, with pre-existing medical disorders. And I also um, myself and my team review women who present with acute medical problems in pregnancy. And I guess that's where today's um, today's tutorial comes in because this is very much about how you approach acute medical problems mm. that face obstetricians, anaesthetists on the labor ward. And it's an area where most physicians, most internists feel very uncomfortable. They're not used to pregnant women and um, obstetricians, OBGYN, they're not trained in medicine and they're not as familiar with acute medical problems as the internists would be. So I, if you like, I deal with a crossover between medicine and obstetrics. Yeah, that that is so fascinating because you're absolutely right. You know, when it comes to uh, sort of obstetrics, we don't generally think of patients who are actually have underlying serious conditions, some of them. And um, and so, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, there would need to be this crossover built into uh, to care for them, because um, I, I guess some people would even question why some women would uh, decide to have babies if they already have an underlying condition. But that's where you come in um, yeah. to keep them to keep them safe. So, yeah. you know, in in your practical world of, uh, you know, in terms of caring for these uh, uh, patients how easy is it for you to to work within that environment is there is it contradictory in some sense or you know uh do you do you have to have lots of team meetings with other uh you know physicians that are happening what what happens for you on a day-to-day -day? so it's um I've, I've been doing this 23 years now so i yes i find it quite easy but for physicians who first work in this field, the obstetrics is a whole new world with a whole new vocabulary, a whole new approach. And uh, if you want to do obstetric medicine, you have to get inside the head of the obstetricians and work out where they're coming from, what their priorities are. You also have to understand pregnant women and women of childbearing age and their desires to have pregnancy. Sure. Some, some, women I, some women I look after people are absolutely horrified and say things like, well, why is this woman having a baby? She's so yeah. sick. But, you know, women are autonomous and mm -hmm. uh, provided they are properly counseled, accurately counseled about what to expect and the risks, then my view is I'm happy to help anybody uh, have a baby. Right. Um, it's about teamwork more than anything else. It's teamwork with specialist physicians, with obstetricians, with anesthetists. Um, and, you know, sometimes with intensive care and, and, and other specialists, but it's very much a team effort. And I sometimes describe my role as that of a project manager. Right. Uh, so it, I sort of, I speak um, obstetric uh, mm -hmm. and I can translate to the, uh, 
to, to the physicians what the obstetrician means when they say induction of labor, for example, and right. I can translate to the obstetrician what the physician's talking about. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, I find myself saying to, to physicians, manage this woman as you would if she weren't pregnant, then say right. that's what you're going to do to the obstetrician and then let the obstetrician tell you whether that is or is not an appropriate strategy in pregnancy. This really sounds like the best of two worlds. So I guess my my question then to you is looking outside of your network, your community, your country, how well are we doing internationally? Is this something that you would see everywhere? Um, how how well is the research in this area? Are you connected in those ways too, Kathy? Yes. Yeah, so so the, the world of obstetric medicine is very small um, mm -hmm. because there aren't that many obstetric physicians in the country. It is big in Canada. Mm -hmm. small in the US, it's growing in the UK, it's big in Australia and New Zealand. Mm. And outside outside those countries, it really doesn't exist, um, right. apart from the odd um, specialist physician with an interest in pregnancy. But, mm -hmm. but uh, physicians who do all of obstetric medicine are few and far between except in Canada, Australia, New Zealand. In the UK, there's about 10 of us at the moment. Um, so it's a very... It's a very unusual specialty. Sure. In, a, in, in answer to your question, how are we doing? Well, I, I come from a very jaundiced point of view in that I believe that the world needs more obstetric physicians. And uh, it gets a little bit political because a lot of obstetricians who are maternal fetal medicine trained mm -hmm. don't see why you would need obstetric physicians. Right. But even though they're trained in maternal medicine, they're not physicians. They're not primarily trained to look after medical problems. Right. Um, so it, the, the, um, the setup is different around the globe. Mm. And uh, I, I like to think that we enhance the care, improve the care uh, right. in, in those units that have obstetric medicine and obstetric physicians. Wow, you're really opening up my eyes. I, I'm just, you know, I guess from a naive place coming in, I'm just assuming that someone is taking care of these patients from a medical point of view, right? I, I mean, it, it, Am I the only person that's naive about that, Kathy, or what? No, it 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 is. Uh, yes, they will be. So, if you take, for example, a patient with inflammatory bowel disease, sure. they have a gastroenterologist, they have an obstetrician. Mm -hmm. In theory, uh, both those doctors have spoken to each other, have mm -hmm. counselled the patient, uh, work in the same unit, right. uh, sing from the same hymn sheet, and give the patient a um, cohesive plan and right. deliver joint care. In reality, that is not what happens. Mm -hmm. The physician might be in a different hospital from the hospital where the woman chooses to have her baby. Communication right. is via snail mail rather than email or the phone. They don't often agree or have the same perspective and the woman ends up con getting conflicting information from her different services. Right. So yes, you're right in assuming there is someone looking after her inflammatory bowel disease, right. but they may not be communicating well with the obstetric services. So this is just this is really about making sure that the the primary goal is connected. Everybody is on the same page. I can see how this, there could be things missed um, for our patients at this point. And that, I mean, to me, it's just so inviting to think that, you know, this is the best of both worlds in the sense that we can really, you know, work with patients that really need this type of specific care. Um, is this type of care, I mean, I, I'm thinking now that we have a, a, many women who have chosen to be pregnant, who have other underlying conditions that otherwise would have been told in the past that they could never have children. But medicine has changed a lot and we have different ways and better ways to care for patients. So is in fact, it's increasing in patient load. Absolutely. So women are delaying pregnancy till they're older. Right. The older you get, the more comorbidities you you uh, mm -hmm. accumulate. Um, women are more obese than they were before, and that brings with it problems. Mm -hmm. And you're absolutely right. Medicine's improving such that women who hitherto would not have been able to contemplate having a pregnancy, mm -hmm. you know, they might be on their fourth renal transplant. Now, right. um, you know, there's age is no longer a barrier to reproduction because we have IVF and assisted yeah. conception techniques and uh, surgery, pediatric surgery, and it, it has advanced and, and medicine has advanced. So we keep women alive who 
wouldn't have lived to childbearing age. Right. And we keep them well such that they can contemplate um, having having a family. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's very it's an ever moving field. And um, mm. we there are many women who previously would would not have been able to have children who now can. Yeah. So this is actually really exciting. So I'm thinking that anyone that's working in obstetrics should be coming to your presentation um, in order to really, uh, you know, listen about some of the advancements, some of the, the skill base that you have. Perhaps it's something that they want to expand on themselves or perhaps they can seek out in their community for others who are already practicing there as well. And it sounds like there's still plenty of room for movement in many countries around the world uh, to expand this sort of skill set as well. So that, that's pretty Pretty exciting. Thank you so much yeah. for, for sharing a little bit about that because I, I know we're going to be talking uh, lots about that during, uh, of course, your presentation. Um, but tell me what else you're doing too, Kathy, because I know you're very passionate about education and I know that you've got something special coming up. So I want to be sure that all of our audience yeah. uh, knows about that too. So please share. Thank you, Fiona. So for, for over 20 years, myself and two colleagues have run a three-day course based in London on medical problems in pregnancy. It was actually set up by our the, the grandfather of obstetric medicine, Professor Michael De Sweet, and we were all taught by him. And we've run the course and we were devastated this year to have to not run it because of COVID. Right. So we've decided to set up a company called the Obstetric Medicine Company and run a virtual course, uh, which is going to be on the 25th of November. There will It will be pre-recorded and shown at two different time zones to hopefully attract people from around the globe. And it will be myself and my two obstetric physician colleagues, David Williams and Catherine Williamson, uh, we will each give two presentations. So there'll be six presentations and then we will join live and have an interactive discussion. So for anyone who's interested, if they just go to the website uh, obstetricmedicinecompany.com, they will find a registration page and details about the program. Um, and it's on the 25th of November. So we'd be excited to, to um, have loads of people connect from around the globe. It's for obstetricians Wonderful. and physicians and anyone yeah. interested in medical problems in pregnancy. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And of course, you know, you'll be with us here at goldobstetrics.com um, where we'll be talking about this specific topic, but there's so much more obviously to learn in this area and what a great way to, uh, to advance, you know, this type of care for sure. Well, thank you so much again to you, Kathy, for joining me here today. Pleasure. Pleasure, Fiona. And again, just to our viewers listening in, don't forget you can go to the website right now. We've got some free events coming up at our Gold Obstetrics Conference as well with our opening keynote starting on November 9th. Uh, you'll be able to listen to all of these presentations live and of course recorded as well for your convenience. So check it all out at goldobstetrics.com right now in order to register. Thank you once again for joining us here today. Bye-bye for now, everyone. Bye-bye.